Okay, I'm going to call the meeting of the Arts and Finance Committee to order. Uh, first thing is the minutes. Um, do I have a motion? Some. Second? Second. Okay. Uh, any uh, corrections, comments? Alan? I think in the CPA article, they recommend the one and a half. That's one and a half percent. That's what I had in my notes, Jim. Yeah. I had one percent. <laughs> I thought it was one and a half. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? I'm a little confused by the sentence. This is in the middle of the second paragraph on the uh, CPA. It says the committee formed to recommend distribution of funds would not be trusted. I don't, yeah, I don't remember anything like that. Anybody? Would not be trusted. By who? By the speaker, I guess. Anybody else have a problem with that? The way it's worded? I delete the whole line. I would delete the whole line. Okay. But I would, I would I'd also. <coughs> I have to the secretary who probably recorded exactly what was said by somebody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why don't we delete the line? It just. <clears throat> Despite your amazing accuracy. <laughs> the last, second to the last line in that same paragraph, I just think it would be a little cleaner if we say the state could change the CPA legislation at any time, making it. Instead of more unattractive, I was thinking of less attractive. Less attractive. Just seems to flow better. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything else. Anybody else? No, on the, no. on the, the Rink Enterprise Fund, um, due to a lot change, unexpected expenses, not a lot change, I guess I thought it was more a, a different, unexpected interpretation of the funds the state would collect or something. It wasn't really a change in the law. I'm yeah, sure exactly. they just decided to collect it. Yeah. Unexpected expenses include payments to DCR now being say collected. collected. I guess it's sort of, it was, it, it, they weren't expecting it to be retroactive, but it became yeah. retroactive. Change okay, so how about changing a lot of policy? Okay, due, due yeah. to department policy or yeah. something, change in policy. Yeah, that's, a good, that's a good idea. Anybody else? Okay, all those in favor? No, okay, sorry. That one sentence, Peter. Um, unexpected expenses include payments to DCR now being collected due to a policy change. No longer allowing? Is that what you mean there? No, 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 no. allowing a portion of such payments. Um, <coughs> okay, that would be okay. I, ha I just have one question whether Somerville has approved the CPA. Does anybody know? It doesn't strike me as Somerville would do it. Peter, could you just like, go on the Somerville webpage and just check that out? Sure. I know Cambridge has, and the others are fine, but I just don't think Somerville would have done it. So you can just check that. Okay, all those in favor of approving the minutes uh, as modified, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, and we are back to electronic voting. Do um, you have some additional information for us? Yes, we do want us to report for our commercial review. I guess right there would be fine, right? Okay. Um, I, I have a document for you, and I apologize that you may have to share my computer ran out of paper this evening. <laughs> so uh, thank you for having us back. You'd asked last time uh, for some additional cost information so that you could have informed, uh, make an informed decision about what to recommend. So I took the opportunity to give a call to our vendor who is doing the rented system for the trial this spring. Uh, and realizing that if we move forward with another rental or purchase, we would go through the full proposal and bidding, open bidding process, so they're not guaranteed. But for convenience, since they are the leading system we 
ago is I got more updated pricing information from them, and I also updated some of the costs. So what you're going to see before you is uh, a very inexpert breakdown of some annualized costs and some average costs <coughs> for purchasing a system. The figure that it would cost to continue to rent a system as we are now with the vendor providing support, the best working figure I came up with is about $1,300 per session. So that's kind of one to keep in mind as you compare uh, these annual costs. So real briefly, in year one is the, is the projected cost for a purchase. And the first group is what we would pay the vendor for. That comes to a, a little less than $32,000 for the hardware, for a soft, the first year of a software license, um, and some startup support that, that we would need from them. The second grouping under personnel is Dave Good's best estimate of what he would need to pay one of his department members to operate the system and take care of the handsets to support town meeting for however many average periods of time. The third category, maintenance costs, they recommend the batteries should last every two or three years depending on use. But this is a very conservative cost that we might need to buy batteries every couple of years. And then another guess about handset replacement. It really depends on how good town meeting members are about not losing them or stepping on them. But I thought it would be prudent to, to have a generous estimate maybe for replacing a few handsets. Would you anticipate that they would turn them in at the end of each town meeting? Yes, yes. Each, each night. Yeah, each night. That's part of yeah. that process. The, uh, I asked the vendor about the expected lifespan of the product, and he recommended about five years. Uh, not, not that the hardware ex would be expected to fail necessarily by then, but with respect to that possibility and also upgrades to technology in about five years, we might want to you know, use a different system. So they recommended five years, so that's what I did. Uh, a few small notes at the bottom you can see about certain assumptions that we didn't make that we just don't know. In my calculation, you know, this comes out to around 10 grand a year um, for, for a five year period, if this is correct. The break even point for a rental at 1300 a night is about eight sessions. Now, the one new piece of information that I want to tell you about is that we could use, if we buy a system, we could use this for more than just town meeting. For example, I've had some interest expressed to me from Carol Kowalski's department in planning that if we had this kind of system, could we use this in a public meeting about zoning or parking or master planning to get audience response voting on, you know, that would go up on the screen? And the answer is yes. The vendors told me that there would be no additional software costs to use the system for that purpose. So I think that's something for the town to think about. If town meeting decides to move forward and decides to invest some money in either renting or purchasing, I think that one of the decision points for rent versus purchase would be, would we use this uh, in other departments <coughs> in meetings or not? Because that could argue for a purchase, just because it's then your cost per use you know, goes down. Uh, we could also, if we bought it and we have special in the fall, even though we don't have that many past several years, but if we have special, we would have a lot of system where if we rented it, we wouldn't have it for special. We, well, we could, but then it would be an additional cost. We have to re rent it out from the company. Um, purchasing it seems personally to me seems a better option because we don't know how long town meetings last. We've gone last year six meetings to ten meetings. Uh, I personally like the six meetings, but we don't <laughs> know. Some you know, future years we may be longer. Um, and it just seems to me the system's. I mean, the thing is, as you see, it's pretty, it looks pretty robust, pretty substantial. say it's substantial. These things all look like they can break pretty easily. The only really moving part is the screw in the back for the battery. So if you were to buy it, I think we would get a lot more use out of it. And I think five years, so, because that's the vendor telling us that's how long they last. And they're not going to tell us it's going to last three years, but we can't guarantee that. Okay, are there any questions? I say in the meeting, in our meeting, we took a straw poll and lots of our committee, we all thought purchasing was the better way to go. Just because we would own it, we would have it, we could have our guys run it, and we could 
use it as we want, for whatever purposes we want, as long as we safeguard them. Yeah, I think for, for this uh, for this appropriation article too, this is certainly a decision for you, for you about what to recommend. Um, I think our thought isn't that we're asking town meeting to decide whether to render to buy a system. I think the real question is what's the maximum amount that would appropriate, and if it's obviously if, it, if we want to purchase, we want to make sure that that amount is high enough. Um, and I don't know if this is needs to be the decision point for rent versus buy. I think that the, I just outlined what some of those mm -hmm. I think the, um, the finance committee has already voted a favorable action with a zero dollar in so that it could take up the space. In other words, there's a positive motion there. And then uh, the finance committee will, like everybody else, see how it goes. And then sometime before we get to this article, uh, we'll make a recommendation and plug in an amount. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we haven't decided either. Um, and I, I think the wording will be, uh, um, you know, to lend, lease, or purchase, or, or whatever, lease or purchase, yeah. and then let the town manager, probably in cons consultation with the capital budget committee, let them figure it out. Uh, yeah, that's, um, that's fine with us. Yeah, I, it, and I think that, uh, like I said, we, we, you know, decide whether we make a recommendation uh, or what recommendation we make. We hopefully, you know, uh, a night or two before this, and then, then it's up to town meeting. It's you know, yep, one way or the other. <coughs> the article immediately, I think immediately proceeding this yes. is a resolution that's designed to give town meeting that specific voice. Now that will happen, of course, after you have your meeting to decide. But there will be the opportunity to say, do we want to do this moving forward or not? Yeah. Followed by the opportunity to vote on resolution. I was almost thinking we could have got by with just the appropriation article, but... Well, yeah. I, I put the resolution in as sort of a, it was something to discuss it. Yeah. Because if, if they decide they like it, then it Articles should be sure, really no brainer. And then we have questions. And, and yeah, they can they ask all their questions and yeah. get up and speak their minds. The reason I wanted to put the resolution was someone could get up and say, it's a scope. Um, whether or not we like it, that doesn't matter if about the dollars. Yeah. So I don't want to give them really a chance to discuss pros and cons and if they like it. Sounds good. Uh, questions, Joe? Could you highlight the efficiencies of, of having it? Well, where do we pick up the efficiency? Well, the only efficiency is in, frankly, the way we we approach it, sorry, was in voter accountability. Right now, we don't know how our representative votes, unless there's a roll call, which in my time we've had two. Um, every vote is now going to be essentially a roll call vote. It won't show on every single vote on the screen. It's just going to show, yes, 50, no, 500. But the next day, you and I can go on, on the website, which Oh, we're working with them to set it up so we can see how everybody voted on every article because we are a representative of the town meeting and I should know how my precinct uh, members vote. That's the real key here. It's not going to speed up town meeting at all except on a roll call and it'll make the standing votes instantly accurate and we don't have to do two or three votes to get the same result. We'll just have the one vote. And it can show the tally, but it's also including how everybody voted. So if someone questions it, you don't have to the vote. Just pull the curtain back, and there it is on the screen. So it's not going to be efficient in time. It's going to be efficient in voter um, accountability, letting the populace know how people voted. And that's our main thrust here is accountability. Okay. Do you, I'm sorry, Joe. Do you and the second question is who, who, what surrounding communities have, have done it? Framingham has been doing it. Brookline does it. Lexington just bought a system. Wayland does it. There are um, open oh, um, meeting. They use for 800 people. Uh, uh, Chelmsford. Chelmsford does it. Um, I think Concord's Concord do it. Concord does it. There's one other one that's also investigating. I think yeah, it might and a lot, of, a lot of the towns are. I'm on the moderator list. We all talk to each other <coughs> for moderator stuff. But electronic voting is being studied and just like we did by at least a dozen commun other communities right now. And it's mostly the larger communities and representative town meetings. Say so the little towns out west, they don't they don't care. They can it's all open town meeting. They can see when fifty people show up, they know who everyone is. Okay. And if a person decides they don't want to use his hand uh how would you take the vote for men? They have to. It's all in there. 
No, they don't have to. Well, how about and they're going to have to go to the back of the room and tell someone how they voted, and that person's going to press the button for them. It's, it, it, there'll be no opportunity to record their vote. I guess they could stand up and say, Mr. Leone, I vote yes. So, we'll have a procedure for, uh, yeah, they'll, they'll provision be, for if the handset fails, there'll be procedures in place yeah, that we'll be borrowing from other towns. We also have provisions in place for a person with a disability yeah. who may have trouble operating the handset or seeing the results, and we'll have, and we're consulting with the Disability Commission on that. But I, you know, I think we, we're really. Um, I'm and in answer to his question, now, we didn't anticipate that anybody would refuse yeah. to use it. <laughs> well, yeah. If I if I could, we, yeah. we did ask the first community that adopted this training him is now in its fifth year, and they have a town meeting that's about our size and it looks a lot like ours mm -hmm. with respect to the diversity of folks there, and they have not had any issues. And, no one has ever refused it. Um, so which isn't to say that Arlington couldn't be unique. It could be first. It could be first, yeah. And we'll have a, we'll, we'll set a procedure for that. That's, thanks for bringing that up. That's actually a good point. Yeah. It's a good point. And that'll, that'll be the moderator's problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, you mentioned the useful life of it, um, which is the only thing I guess I'm concerned about. At $10,000 a year, I would have it. I would have thought it would have either been cheaper per year or maybe last longer. Now, you're, I just want to—I I understand that the vendor is saying this. My question is, what is the anticipation? In if, because it's either going to work or not in the sense of the software. It's not something you're, you're, we're going to have to reprogram unless we change the number of town meeting members. I would presume something along those lines. No, the, the software will pay that annual fee. As you can see which level of the software here. It's just these. And the um, base station to talk about is, is the hardware of the purchase. So, even how long does the TV clicker last? Well, your TV clicker, I would assume, is being used a lot more often yeah, exactly. than these are. That's why I'm that's that's saying. Basically, this thing, over 10 nights, it's maybe going to get 10 nights of use a year, or 3 out of 30 hours yeah. a year. And plus, ancillary use, maybe another 15 hours. Seems to be it should. You know, I keep my cars until they fall apart. Right. So, yeah. If you're asking, I'm not asking. Are, you're asking I mean, about I our instinct. I think that yeah. you did design it, you didn't build it, but yeah, yeah, the yeah, expectation I think would I, be my the personal last expectation is basically looking at this is that we would get could get a lot more out of it if we were happy with the functionality. Yeah. Um, I and I'm not a hardware expert in technology. I work with other kinds of tech, and I think that where you where you really start to see end of life is that when you realize there's something new or shinier on the market that does things better than you can think about, and you want them. But that's a different decision. Uh, but that's when a vendor asked that, and I think as, as the moderator said too, I think no vendor is going to tell you what well, last 10 or 15 years, because why would you go back? I have a second question, <coughs> follow-up actually, which is sort of piggybacks. Um, I don't anticipate somebody not voting, because they could not vote now. They could just sit down and never get up. Right. Um, yeah. But I guess what I would worry about, and I'm against, is is there a provision where the body um, could say, we don't want that vote posted? Would no, that? Town meeting, yeah. Um, by state law, you can't have seat. Well, what I'm saying is, well, you, you, you can have to stand up and do it, but not have it recorded. <coughs> that's that's no, what I was Because no, that's what we're doing now. No, well, the bylaws do not provide for it. And the only, if we take a roll call vote, if we can't, representative town meetings aren't allowed to have secret ballots unless they go through like all sorts of crazy procedures. Well, not so secret, so just well, not. On this, well, we changed the bylaw to allow this. Okay, so really? they, they agreed okay, to change good. the bylaw. Uh, I and think it's now our bylaw. No, I think it's great. I yeah. think, and I'm all for it. So, <laughs> get a driver's license and they don't get it back until they want it. Yeah, yeah, you know, but you're not saying that we know what's going on. No, I think that's a good question. Last year, when we presented this at town meeting, and along with the bylaw amendment, that that the town we discussed and debated that the expectation and the real reason for doing this is the committee strongly felt that the accountability was really the, the selling point. Um, so therefore, we, so we actually suggested the time meeting approved a bylaw that required um, any vote using this device to be published. The, the decision to use the devices we left in the hands of the moderator because there can be a number of technical and other situations that in the room that we might need to go back to the old style. So that's still permitted, but no action. No action was just, no action was just too quick. Why would we waste 30 seconds to do this? No action before you move on. You, you, you wouldn't want to slow down those. Well, 
the controversial ones that we all are interested in. Exactly. Like if dogs and uh, leaf blowers. Dogs, leaf blowers, and chickens. And there's also a provision for, <coughs> for members to require an online vote for, the, for that very reason as well, just regardless of the moderator. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Yeah. So you'll see, still see using a lot of voice votes. I think, I think this year, frankly, it's going to kind of go half and half. Yeah. So people get used to this, and when they get used to it, they just might say, we can't use the clickers all the time. <laughs> and I, I don't have a problem with that, because we're anticipating the, well, okay, the, the station takes essentially 15 seconds to do a good call of the room. So everybody gets, the machine talks to the computer two times, two and a half times, it takes 15 seconds. So we thought 15 second voting window. And whatever the last you pressed, pressed one or two, yes or no, the very last one you pressed the machine reads is going to be your vote. So in that 15 seconds, you can change your mind 100 times until that very last second, whatever the last one you pressed is it. So you have an option to waffle back and forth until the time's up. Yep. So it'll, instead of a all favor, no action, move on. <coughs> 15 seconds, so frankly, I don't want to use them for no actions. I don't want to use them for the little yeah, $500 for the parade. People just vote those every time, unanimously. Why? Yep. Slow down. Makes sense to me. Charlie, do you have a question? Yes. Um, John, uh, I don't remember the bylaw, I don't remember the town manager act with respect to this, and I don't remember what we changed last year when we mm -hmm. voted. <coughs> but it seems to me that it has always taken. Um, uh, an action by town meeting members to have their votes recorded. And that there are provisions for voice votes and standing votes in, right. the, in the body of the law, whatever that law is. Yeah. Now, when we made this change last year, did we eliminate that consideration? No. We, the way it was before was that it, um, the bylaw essentially read in the first instance all voices would be taken by, vote, by voice. Voice vote. That's Five right. members stand, we can have a standing vote. Right. If 30 members stand to challenge, it would be a um, roll call vote. The final analysis in the first instance it's voice or clicker. Um, if five members stand to change it, it will reveal to show how everybody voted. Um, or if the spread of the vote is within, well, it, it would change, we want to change that to make it better this year because we had a flaw. If it's within five or six votes, it will automatically show. So it will eliminate the need for people to challenge the vote and get up. But at 30, if 30 people still rise, it, can, it will force the screen to be shown. My question though is, are you, you know, you are seeing the moderator unilaterally changing the nature of the voice vote to a roll call vote by using this information. You may be interested in transparency, but maybe the body is not. Well, it will, on the votes, unless it's a vote that requires a two thirds or if it's challenged or if it's extremely close, it's just going to show a tally. 100, okay, so there will, there'll be but no the background data, difference. the background data will be saved and the, how you and I vote will be available the next day. So, yeah, whenever we can get it up. Okay, but isn't that it's changing? Isn't that a unilateral yes. change in the voice vote rule? It's that's the bylaw we voted last year, but it is changing the nature of the meeting. And that's one of the things. I'm, but I'm, my question is: Is yeah. did we did we unilateral? Did we change that in the make to make that information public? Did we yes, change that we in did the bylaw? Change that last year, and that's going to be one of the things I anticipate town meeting to debate during that resolution. Do they like it? Do they want that? Or they want to go back and just keep it the way it was, because it will change the nature of the meeting. Well, my point is that you can have the electronic voting, but not report the votes unless the former procedure is carried through. Then my my response is why bother? We uh, by spending money. Brookline has a, has a provision for that where they have a some kind of procedure on the floor that they call a recorded vote, and it triggers that that threshold and I think our committee considered that and recommended to town meeting uh, that that we just do what, what John said that if we're going to use these and if we have the courage of our convictions that was our thought and town meeting you know voted, voted yeah. but if, if 
you know, we're responsible. If we're, if we're not going to show it, why bother spending the money? Just keep it the way, keep it the way we do it. And if people are really concerned, have a roll call vote. We'll go through. We will, everybody voices their vote. But the rationale for doing it is to show how people voted. Okay. Are there any other questions, Paul? It will change the nature of the meeting. I agree with you. The twelve hundred dollars that uh, the IT director quoted as his estimate. Do you know how many sessions of town meeting he was uh, basing that on? Yeah, I think we figured eight to ten. There's somewhere between ten. No, we average. Yeah, our average is around eight to ten. He said I can do it for a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. Um, putting one of his his employees in there because Dave right now does he controls um, a lot of things on the screen. So I don't know if he's He's there as a town meeting member, so I don't. Well, you also I don't practically need another person on board. Yeah, we need someone besides him yeah. to run the voting. And he can he'll, he'll, he'll do the video switch between the two. But, and this year we'll have the vendor supply operator. Okay, any other questions? Charles? How do you change your vote? You can change your vote by one is yes, two is no. Up until the time. The 15 seconds is up. You can change it by just pressing one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Um, once voting locks down, though, and if the screen shows and it's you claim you voted yes and it's showing no, you have to get up. We haven't quite figured out how to review that system. procedure. Um, but in, in there, because it pulls your hands up three or four times, it'd be pretty hard to prove the computer wrong. If you, and the biggest problem the vendor told us is people turning these off. They hit the off switch, they turn them off. My, my clicker isn't working. And it's like, oh, you turn it off. So <laughs> that's the biggest problem. Well, we're borrowing a procedure from, I think, Framingham and both Brooklyn do have good provisions in place. If someone just says, you know what, this is just not how I voted, and I'm floored the voting administrator to make the adjustment in the computer. Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a question of floor the procedures that the moderator will. Yeah, we're, gonna, we're working on these procedures. But I think sensitivity to that is important. It's not proved to be a practical problem in the time we've talked to so far. Okay, Paul? Uh, is there a way to abstain? Three. Okay. Yes. Three is abstain. As now, an abstention won't get counted towards the majority of the minority. It's just you, you were there, you just chose not to vote. Okay, Brian? Um, I assume. By de facto, we'll have attendance as to who's attending and who's not. Yeah. Correct. Well, we'll know who's going to pull out at the end of okay. the night when we vote to adjourn by electronic voting. I assume you'll have a uh, maybe a list of rules or something like that? Yeah, we're going to come up with the whole procedures, and I will okay. provide those with my letter I send out <coughs> with the selectors <coughs> package. So you can start having that ready to go. Okay. Charlie? Take it. Yes. Uh, one other question about changing the vote, John, and that is uh, in roll call votes, yes. I, I have seen in the past, and this is a parliamentary procedure that's used virtually in any voting body that I know of that follows Robert's rules, and certainly in the U.S. Congress, that when the uh, voters see that the vote is going in a certain direction, an early voter might change his vote in order to be on the prevailing side so he could make a motion for reconsideration. This. Uh, procedure that you're describing, or that, that we're contemplating here, seems that would, would eliminate that uh, possibility. No, well, first we follow town meeting time, not Robert's rules. Well, town meeting. So, you can still, there will still be the motion for reconsideration again at night. But, you can only move, move reconsideration if you voted on the prevailing side. That's and, and in correct. roll call votes, I, many times I've seen a town meeting, a member will stand up before the vote is complete, while, you know, maybe you're taking the roll call from 200 people takes a while yeah. and change their vote. Mr. Moder, I'd like to change my vote. And it's been recorded as changed. If this process takes 13 seconds, that um, that is, a, is an option that's removed from the members. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're not going to have the second vote. We're not going to have the third vote. We're going to have one vote and we're done. Okay. So you're not going to uh -huh. be able to stand and see how your neighbors are voting. And it's like, oh, everybody's standing. He's going to be. He's going to have to just vote your. As Eric just said, vote conviction. Okay. okay anybody else? John. <coughs> okay. Anybody else? Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you.
So I think this uh, handout should be very interesting. You know, you're constantly sort of, it's gonna cost me 10,000 a year. Is it worth the process that we're going through? So it'll be an interesting debate. Thank you very much for coming. Okay, and now, an issue we've been all waiting for. Uh, Minuteman, okay, I know it's here someplace. Article 34, Minuteman. Mr. Bocon? Where would you like to share? Right there is fine. Okay. And if you could introduce your uh, colleagues. Charles Laura Morissette is our representative tomorrow in Arlington. Uh, I am. I am Arlington. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is. And Kevin Mahoney is our assistant superintendent of finance. I'm going to just, as I do every year, just go through uh, some slides in here. There's some other slides that are not part of this agenda, but I'll be able to answer questions, and I'm sure there may be questions about some other things that Minuteman is involved in. But I'll go briefly through these and then answer questions through the chair as um, the chair recognizes those. Um, on page two of slide uh, four, you see are the uh, budget drivers for FY15. We're expecting another uh, increase in enrollment, a smaller increase than we experienced this year. And that, of course, drives up uh, costs in direct support, special ed and others. We also have some unfunded mandates that all schools are dealing with, the educator evaluation system, the park testing. Um, our collective bargaining agreement expires at the end of this fiscal year, and we're in negotiations now for the next three years. Um, our health insurance, we have pegged at about a 10% increase this year. And then our capital costs, we call them bridge projects, which is really a bridge to a renovated building or a new building. Overall, on page three, slide five. Okay, um, yes, sir. let's just take it sort of one at a time. Anybody have any questions so far? Look, Joe? On the, on the health, are, are you in the GIC? No, we're in a health trust with five other regional vocational technical schools. And at different points in time, the trust has evaluated joining the GIC. Right now, there's more discussion about it because one of our members is merging with another school district and they're forming a new regional school. That's the, the Essex Aggie um, North Shore Regional and I think Peabody Vocational School District. Um, so there is some more discussion about that. Kevin sits on the, uh, the health trust for the district and could answer more specific questions about it. Yeah. Should consider because our health insurance costs are only going up 1% this year. Anybody else? Okay. Um, overall, our budget for proposed for FY15 is 19.6 million, although it's an overall increase of 5.9% uh, because of increases in revenue. Our increase to our member towns, the assessment's up only 3.8%. And if you looked at the assessments to our member towns over the last five years, they've averaged about 1% a year for the last five years. Um, <clears throat> The enrollment chart on slide six, you can see we've had about a 23% increase in enrollment over the last five years, and we're expecting that to go up slightly again next year. Um, overall enrollment on page four, slide seven. Um, on October one, there were about 796 students. That's including our postgraduate students as well as the high school. You can see member town enrollment is up about 440. And then the uh, other non-member communities, and you recall that the uh, big three non-members, that's Watertown, Waltham, and Medford, <coughs> are currently sending 165 students. And all other communities, um, about 191. And of that 191, I believe 60, 65 are from Boston Public Schools coming to Minuteman. Um, page nine, uh, page five, slide nine, is just a graphic representation of what I mentioned earlier. You can see for FY15, our assessments to member communities is 10.2 million. It's about $300,000 more than it was six budgets ago, or five budgets ago. Our revenue plan, on, if you can see that, on uh, slide 10, uh, in the Second column from the left is uh, 10.2 million is the assessments to our member towns. And then uh, 
Chapter 78, we're expecting a slight increase of 2.1 million. We're expecting a somewhat larger increase in our regional transportation aid. And our, our tuition is up again this year. The tuition we're collecting from uh, non-member communities this year uh, is about 5.9 million, which we'll be applying to next year's budget. That's known as prior year tuition. And then we're using $382,000 of our anticipated uh, tuition, which is described as current year tuition um, in this budget. And then $100,000 out of excess and deficiency. And that brings us to the $19.6 million. Why is the uh, postgraduate school tuition zeroed out? Um, we've applied that postgraduate tuition into the revolving account where the expenditures are occurring. We had always been, um, I think that's the, fin the finance committee uh, um, made that change this year because it was taking administrative costs for um, the postgraduate programs and putting them in the revolving account, but we weren't counting all the revenue that we were collecting for the postgraduates in the correct place. So I assume if we went to a place with the expenses in the budget for the postgraduate, we'd see a concurrent $100,000 yes. drop in expenses? Yes. Anybody right. else? Okay. Whoa. Okay. Paul, Joe, Charlie, Dean. Um, I believe I heard today that the Senate and House, mm. maybe their committee members, have uh, promised uh, some increase in state aid of some level. Is this consistent with the level that they seem to be promising today, or do you not? Well, we would be quite uh, quite valued in our predictive abilities if it was. This was based upon the governor's budget, um, and no adjustments have been made at yeah. this time. The resolution that came through uh, today was uh, had an increase in UG, but no increase in Chapter 70. So. Joe? Transportation reimbursement. Who, who, get, who do you get reimbursement from? The state. It's part of all regional schools get reimbursed. I think it's 58% or 58 it varies by year, but it's, it runs roughly 55 to 58% based upon uh, cost incurred the by year. We spend about $1.2 million on transportation overall, and this goes to offset that expense. Okay, Charlie? How much, um, how much tuition do we get per tuition student? Well, the commissioner has set that this year at 18300 and change. 309 now, is that down from last year? It's down about 8% from last year. Um, the commissioner's intention is to continue to lower that rate for all uh, non-resident tuition rates across the state until he gets to about 125% of foundation, which would be a total reduction in a per pupil tuition rate of about 25% when he's all finished doing that. So he's been under, I assume this is because of pressure from the sending districts and towns, or ten, sending towns. Pressure from traditional superintendents, yes. Okay. Charlie? Okay. Dean? Um, on the prior year and current year tuition, going back a few years, you guys were, you had made a decision to sort of do this shift in how you treated the prior year and the current year yes. tuition and it at the time hurt us um, but if I look at it here I think it, that, that shift is over at this point is that fair to say pretty much um, the school committee voted by um, to take three fiscal years to reduce our reliance on what we is known as current year tuition right to zero so that we'd be relying on prior year tuition going forward, probably around the FY17 budget. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that that I mean, that's kind of what I'm looking at. So then you just so that 382 is just going to tail to nothing. At, yes. At, okay. Got it. Thank you. Is the 5,965 the total you collected last year? We're collecting it now as we speak. Okay. So 15 uses this fiscal 14. So that's your yes. projection for this year. Yes, and we're pretty close to projections. We're not, we bill in uh, November and March, I believe. May. May. <clears throat> so we don't collect the money till 
pretty much the end of this fiscal year, okay. which is one of the problems with relying a lot on current year tuition. If there was a blip, you'd be in a, a revenue shortfall. Or if a town or a city refused to pay, which one tried to do. Okay. Yep, I'll say Steve, okay. now just to further talent question. Isn't the actual collections the 5.9 plus what we <coughs> projected for current year tuition in fiscal 14 to the, the six? So it's about 6.5, 6.6 million. Yes. Our total, yeah, yeah. total tuition collected would be that 595 or 596 plus the 600,000 of current year tuition within the FY14 right. column. Okay. And then I just have a question on the percentage of, of foundation. You said that the goal is. If it comes to fruition in the future, it'd be at about 125%. What does what the 18309 represent, if, if, you, if you know? 150 minus 8%. Okay. All right. So there's another 17% if, if this. Yes. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Sir? Okay. Um, out of district tuition revenue, I guess you just can see on slide 11. The Arlington historical enrollment, that's uh, what's driving assessment increases the last couple of years. Um, enrollment is up to 165. That includes about a dozen uh, postgraduate students. That's the highest uh, we've seen in a few years. On page 13, the Arlington assessment for FY15 would be 3.7 million. Um, that's up about 13% or so. Um, even though your enrollment's been up about 22%. Um, and then on page uh, slide 14, we're just showing the overall budget based upon the general account function codes provided by the state. Can you, is there any reason, you, can you think of any reason why, for example, if Arlington would jump all of a sudden so very dramatically? In enrollment? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think there's a couple of driving factors this year, the last couple of years. I think one is, um, as parents are telling us, the anticipated um, enrollment in Audison has, <coughs> feels like it's going to, they, they want to go to a school that may not be as crowded, or there's some concern about that. Whether it's a ra reality or not, I don't know. But we've also had a lot of great support from parents in Arlington and giving us access to talking to parents more this year. Uh, we've uh, changed our recruitment and marketing uh, strategies a little bit. Uh, we have uh, we start earlier in the school year, and, and as early as October, where our, our Arlington students go to Austin Middle School and talk to Arlington students about Minnesota. So I think there's been also a, a, a sort of a, a broader-based <coughs> increase in the interest in the value add of vocational technical education. Across the Commonwealth, given the performance of our schools overall. Ellen? Yeah, just to comment, I think that's also partial validation of the curriculum changes you made. Yes. Of course, it's more relevant, therefore more attractive. Absolutely. Okay, Carol? But did you say that these numbers include postgraduate students as well? Yes, there's about 12 postgraduate students. Okay, so how would it break down otherwise? You had about the same level of postgrad students as you did. Like, you mean overall or yeah, from our from Arlington? From Arlington and the last couple of years. It's been about the same. We had about 26 postgrad students back in uh, 2012. And our overall postgraduate student enrollment has gradually declined during the recession. I think people were having trouble paying even the modest uh, $3,000 for tuition that uh, students from member communities are. Member communities would pay in the six thousand if they were non-member communities. That was a factor. Okay. Anybody else? Are we on slide thirteen and fourteen? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Gene. Um. So if I look at your proposed budget by function. Yes. Um. <coughs> I think I did this correctly. Um. I might not have. If I take out, so this is, I mean, it's really three components in this budget. You have an operating, you know, if I look at the schedule, you have an operating budget, a capital budget, and a debt service budget, right? So I said, well, let's just forget the capital and the debt service because those have no 
correlations to the kids in the building, right? But the operating budget does. Um, if I have this right, the operating budget's going up over 8%. In terms of what we provide for direct services to students? Well, no. I mean, I just, I just added up your account code 1,000. Well, I just added up account code 1,000 through 5,000. Mm -hmm. Last year was 17.2 million. This year it's 18.6. So you're going up about 8.3%. 8, 8 you're going up about 8.3%. 8 um, I haven't looked at it quite that way, but yeah, I believe so, you. Right. So, but, and then, you know, one of the big, you know, you have two drivers, right? So you have administration and student instructional services, right? So, you, you know, I, I so just sort of messing around with the student instructional and you say to yourself, all right, if you had a two and a half, three percent cost of living adjustment plus a six percent enrollment, maybe you could absorb some of it, maybe you can't. Um, but then you have this big 30 something percent increase on administration. So, yeah, we, I can speak to that increase. Um, over the last four or five years, <coughs> Um, we've made some reorganization in um, putting positions in the administrative function code that were really administrative. An example of that would be marketing and recruitment. Prior to FY12, um, that function was in guidance, which would have come under the 2,000 uh, student instructional and stu 2 and 3,000. So we moved that into administration uh, because we have a dedicated uh, administrative assistant and a dedicated administrator who just works on recruitment and so that was one. We did add restructure the business office. So when you say that though that means that the instructional budget actually went up more. Yeah over the last two years, last this this year that we're in right now we had a 20, uh, we had an increase of about 85 students, uh, close to 15 or 16 percent and our as you remember, half of our students, about 47% this year, are on IEPs. So there was a corresponding increase in the special ed services budget as well as in the academic side to keep vocational, to keep uh, academic class sizes reasonable. Um, and then we also converted a number of shop areas that had been reduced to one teacher departments back to two teacher vocational departments. And we did that by shifting a technical aid who we hired. We hired three or four of them that could be licensed as full vocational technical teachers, and we were able to do that last year and to an extent this year. So, you know, I mean, I, I get it. And I, I say this as I think maybe your most unabashed cheerleader on this finance committee over the years. Um, seems like it's going up pretty good. It seems like we're going up pretty high on an operating budget. I mean, cause you get a 6.3% increase in students and an 8.2% increase in cost, and you'd think there'd be some degree of absorption of additional students into the cost structure. Just mm -hmm. That's just my observation. It feels like it's off. Yeah, I think if you, if you look back to what we did in 2011, where we cut the budgets, of, you know, 7 point, I think it was 7%. We laid off close to 23 people. We've been growing slowly and strategically where we need people, we're hiring them. So that could be um, having an impact right now in our being able to provide staffing in the areas that we really need it, and it's become somewhat critical in some areas. But the overall, this overall budget is up only two and a half FTE, I think. One uh, math teacher, um, uh, a uh, communications director, and then a, uh, a part-time maintenance person. Okay. We're trying to invest a lot in technology as well. Uh, with the uh, preparing for the park assessment, what we're going to do to increase our uh, infrastructure. We committed to that in the current fiscal year, and we're continuing that process in the second phase in the next fiscal year. And some of the, some of that uh, investment is also listed on the administrative side on the district-wide technology. Okay. So, <clears throat> Dr. McClellan, the uh, in your budget book, there's a student-teacher ratio table, mm -hmm. and uh, it looks to me like like Minuteman is um, between one and two. Um, let's see if I can say this right. Uh, units of student-to-teacher ratio below uh, three of the other four comparative districts. Which would be driving your cost up, right? Yes. 
So why, why is that? Because our <coughs> special ed population is significantly higher than those, than those other vocational. Are you looking at the vocational technical school comparison? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah. And what do you think it's going to be? It says here the 13, 14 numbers are now. Do you have a sense of what it's going to be 13, 14? Our teacher-student ratio, I think it will be higher and a little closer to the comparable schools. Thank you. Okay, Paul. So what was the collective bargaining salary increase? We, it hasn't been determined. It's in negotiations right now. Um, what, what is it for the current year? Or? The current year is 2%. We're ending a three-year contract where it was 0%, 1%, so okay. that plus the student increase would be some of the increased costs that he was looking at. So I assume your collective bargaining money is buried in there someplace. Yes. How many how many years over the last say since uh, two thousand and eight have, have you had zeros? Um, just that one year, the first year of this contract, which is expiring. Okay. Don't forget to tell your unions are only since that two years. Anybody else, John? Um, in Arlington Public Schools, for many years, it disturbed me a lot that we were paying for uh, uh, transportation and things like that to other schools in order to be able to fulfill uh, some of the special school requirements. Mm -hmm. And Arlington Public Schools have controlled that pretty carefully now and try to do the special education within the public school system. Uh, and uh, the question I guess I have for you is, do you have very much in that kind of thing? Or, or do all your special students uh, stay right here? Virtually all of our special ed students receive their services at home. Okay. Very, very rarely. I mean, maybe once in the last seven or eight years have we had to place a student outside of them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, on slide 14, the admin costs are at 28%. Could you elaborate on this? Yeah, I was trying to get at some of the technology um, infrastructure upgrades that we kind of referred to are within that function code. We also restructured some of the uh, positions prior to this and put it in the administration where they had been in student services before. Um, but that would have been this year's increase. Right. It's fully, you fully see it in the FY 14 and 15 budget there. Okay, Charlie? In the detail in your budget book, uh, it has personnel and benefits it's showing a 226% increase. Yeah, page 20 uh, in the budget book will give you a detail by line item of what the change you know, makes up to 28%. Um, the superintendent mentioned early on we were dealing with some of the uh, unfunded mandates in the state. One of those has been the uh, educator evaluation system. And when you look at the, the line item uh, that uh, the child was referring to, the personnel and benefits, um, what we did was we reordered the business office so that we saw a decrease of $39,000 in staffing costs. And we were able to apply some of that savings towards uh, moving forward with the uh, human resource director. We had that position in the past, but we uh, we did kind of for uh, last fiscal year, we're bringing that back. And we also reassigned, um, not reassigned, but we posted for a, a supervisor of evaluation position. And um, one of our uh, longtime uh, staff members applied for the position and we hired her for that job. So um, we basically, uh, the transferring salary that we had in teaching services and moving that into administration to support that position. The other, uh, the other uh, investment of note, as I mentioned earlier, was the, uh, the uh, technology investment. Uh, we're trying to staff up for that as well. So uh, that's, that's the detail that gets to some of the administrative increases. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Um, that's, that's the budget uh, overview. Any other further questions? Or? 
Okay. There's a few slides in there, uh, Mr. Chairman. I don't know if you wanted me to go through where, just briefly where we're at with the uh, feasibility study. Sure. Um, there's a couple slides in there. You'll see slide 16. Um, MSBA has extended our feasibility study uh, contract to reflect the work of the regional amendment agreement subcommittee, also to give I think the Department of Education time to solidify and uh, the intergovernmental agreement concept. So I just wanted to make people aware that if Minuteman is successful in, the, in completing the feasibility study and if we're successful in moving forward through schematic design, we wouldn't be coming to any communities um, for two more years with any kind of a capital project reflecting either a renovation or a new building or some combination of new and renovated. Um, from the, the viewpoint of our, we have a, Skanska is our owner's project manager, and Castle Blue's architects are the design team. In the preliminary design program they, we submitted to the MSDA back in November, there were um, six models. There's been further work on those models based upon uh, some direction from the school committee and the they're, they're, I'm calling it the worst case scenario uh, of a project of $120 million with only 40% reimbursement, which is what we're guaranteed as a minimum from MSBA, and a 30-year bond and no facility fee collected. Um, the range that it would have on a median homeowner's tax bill would be between $18 and $92, $93 a year. In Arlington, based upon the uh, calculations done by our Financing consultant from the uh, Unifund at Arlington would be about $75 a year. The intergovernmental agreements is a really critical component in, in Minuteman's future, to be honest with you. Historically, as you know, 45% to 55% some years of our enrollments come from outside the district. And uh, we, by law, are not able to assess them any kind of additional fees for facility use or capital projects. The Department of Ed has approved the idea of an intergovernmental agreement between the school district of Minuteman and the school district, or the school committee of ascending district that is not a member. And the facility fee is being, formula is being developed as we speak by the Department of Ed. And that facility fee would be uh, triggered when a intergovernmental agreement is in effect and there's an MSBA project in effect as well. And that facility fee would be applied directly to reduce the capital costs uh, apportioned, as the Department of Ed will tell us soon, I hope, um, to non-member communities. So that would be a really huge um, benefit to any kind of a capital project being approved by our member communities. Um, and I think it might also depending on how the facility fee gets calculated, be attractive for non-members to join the region. Um, it will require a change in our admissions policy, which we're working on right now. Um, and I've been promised by the Department of Ed that we'll have um, this intergovernmental agreement in writing prior to the Lincoln town meeting, which is our first town meeting, which is uh, two weeks from Saturday. Okay, Paul. What is the nature of the change in district admissions policy that's required? We have to have three categories of students. Right now, we have all our applications are treated the same, whether they're from member communities or non-member communities. It's been like that for a number of years. It is legal to, for lack of a better word, uh, discriminate against applications based upon where the student lives. So member district applications would have first priority, Intergovernmental applications would have second. And then if there was still room in the school and we were considering um, applications from individual students in individual towns that <coughs> were not part of an intergovernmental agreement, they would have third, last priority in, in program selection. So if you look at what happens to the enrollment trends of new, newly built vocational technical schools, um, I doubt that that third category of student would have room in the school. Carol? So as the tuition rates increase for students who are outside of the um, a, a fee will be applied to that student as well? A 
facility fee. Facility fee, yeah. so that we will see some of the recruit that it would go directly into capital. Yes, <clears throat> that's the notion. And you know, when we first started the regional agreement task force four years ago, that was not even an option on the table, and now it is. So. Charles, uh, I'd like to go back to the MSBA feasibility study update. Uh, I have two questions uh, as to your uh, comments, comments on. One is, uh, I, I had seen some uh, information that indicated that the uh, project might be as much as $160 million. That's been pretty much taken off the table, yes. That has? Yes. That was a very conservative estimate. Uh, <clears throat> we've had some other information come to us about the site itself. We've also had some uh, encouraging interest if we were to build a new building in repurposing the existing building, which would generate um, some savings in a, in, a, in, a, in a construction project that would be applied directly to the, the overall project. And uh, the, uh, the second question is, uh, there was recently a, a vote um, by the uh, building committee, I mean, school building committee, Regarding a 400 student school or 435 versus 800, mm -hmm. would you care to comment on that for us? The school committee, the school building committee, and then the school committee both voted to instruct the design team to spend the limited funds that are left within the feasibility study. Not limited; there's still 70 percent of the funds are there, but to look at a design enrollment of not to exceed 800 students. The, the feedback that we got from the design team was, and I should just back up a bit to remind folks that we're one of the few projects that were given two enrollment design numbers by the MSBA to plan for, two, basically two schools. And for each one, you have to do three models, plus a repair model of your existing. <coughs> so we um, did that for our preliminary design review and came up with six models, including a repair model. Um, and then as we looked at the projecting out a couple of years, what would happen if you had a 435 model and then you realized you needed 600? It would be more expensive to design to a larger school than take a look, an 800 school and pare it down. And as the design team is going forward, they've been instructed to look at designs where you could lop off parts of an existing building should the school committee um, <coughs> finalize the design enrollment figure at something less than 800. When we, right now we have less than 400, I think, am I right, less than 400 member? About 430. Oh, it's 430, okay. 430 member towns contributing students. Yes. Okay. So if we were to be going towards 800 students, <coughs> how, how do you envision that we will get to that number? Well, I think two ways that, um, because of all the wheels in motion, I think the intergovernmental agreement um, and the new regional agreement would be attractive to communities joining. I also, if you look at the enrollment percentage of eighth graders applying to vocational technical schools <coughs> across the Commonwealth, uh, if uh, it's a city vocational school, you get 25 to 30 percent of the eighth graders are applying as freshmen into that. In ur rural areas, it's about 13 to 15 percent. In suburban areas, which I would um, call Minuteman a suburban, its average is about 7%. Uh, Minuteman for the last 10 years has averaged about between 35 and 4%. So if we were able to just increase the applications from 8th graders just to the average of suburban schools, uh, we'd be about 625 students from in-district. And if one or two of the larger cities that have um, been sending us a large number of students for a long time join the region, we'd be at 800. Thank you. Alan? The $120 million worst case is for the 800? Yes. Student scenario. Do you have a, a worst case for the smaller? It was, so, um, it was about $113 million. <laughs> and how many students? 435. <coughs> The detailed models that we uh, gave to MSBA with all six models at that time in November are on our website um, under the, uh, the, the building project link on the website. I think the repair option, just the repair alone was uh, close to $80 million.
when was the last time we had 600 in district kids in the school system? It was back in the uh, probably the early 90s. And perhaps in the early 2000s, there might have been a year or two there. I think there's a I think in the budget book, there's actually a historical enrollment to answer that better. Yeah, okay. Page 11. Page 11. Page 11. And then we partly touched about 500. And does this can, can include postgraduate? No, I think for the next page. Yes. But there weren't that many postgraduates out there in those periods of time. So I think you'd have to go back to the early 90s. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I, I'm just wondering whether it's, it's realistic to assume we're going to have 600 from in, in district. I think, it, you know, it's, it's a stretch. But if you look at the enrollment trends of new vocational schools, schools that have been through a renovation. Their enrollment trends have all hit that average and, and beyond in some districts. Helen? I, I guess I'm confused. The, the, in, at October 1st, 13th, there's 796, including out of district. When you say planning for 800, is that planning for 800 in district? It's just planning for 800. We don't know who's going to be in or out so, at that period. So we have a 796 total. Right now. Right now. So why would that go down? I am confused why we're talking about having a hard time hitting 800 when we're already at 800. What, what well, I'm costs? talking district kids. <coughs> who's paying but, the capital? But, it's a question of who's paying the capital cost. Well, I understand, but as far as planning for the size of the school, there's 800 now, so. Well, I mean, part of the reason. I mean, don't you have to plan for the school for both district and out of district? Or are you saying there wouldn't be any out of district students? Well, it, it's um, out of district kids can come and go. Uh, Waltham builds a new school there; they might pull back some of theirs. So, uh, uh, you know, Medford decides to uh, build a new program and enter a collaborative with Melrose and Malden, and all of a sudden you lose a bunch of kids there. And the only ones we can depend on is is the kids from the district. And okay. uh, so, if you build a smaller school, we're sort of saying out of district go away. Well, if you, if you go for a 600, pick a number out of the yes. air, if you go for 600 yeah. kids, then we know we can fill two-thirds of it and probably be able to pull in another 200. You know, we should... And, I, and I, if you look at that timeline, that's a decision the school committee is going to need to make in the next year. Um, is what If we get approval and go to final schematic, that's when you have to have one number can't get too far into that and not know exactly what you're going to be building it for. So the next year is critical when it comes to the intergovernmental agreement. It's important that the regional amendment agreement gets passed and so we can have something solid for them to, to reflect on and that we can do calculations with them about the cost benefit of being, being a member. Okay, anybody else on this? Um, the regional agreement um, has made a number of adjustments. On slide 21, it's just an overview. And then on the next two slides, is a bit more detail on the uh, current agreement versus the proposed. Um, the assessment of our annual and capital costs would be utilizing a four-year rolling average, which in uh, Arlington's case would probably have been beneficial this year to have a four-year rolling average because it takes the spikes out. Um, um, there's a weighted vote where um, the school committee voted last evening to amend this. I know it's quite controversial, um, especially in Arlington, but Arlington still has a, uh, a weighted vote that's almost six times greater than the smallest community and three times greater than the average community vote. Um, it's, it's based upon enrollment as well as an equal share. I should mention the capital costs, which are now based solely on enrollment, are going to be based upon 50% enrollment, uh, 
one percent for each member district, and the remaining third will be based on wealth or ability to pay factors that are calculated by the Department of <coughs> Education and Revenue um, in their Chapter 78 formulas. The admission of new members, the school committee has an opportunity to negotiate admission of new members, um, so it's a transition into a full pledged member. Right now, if a community wants to withdraw, it's virtually impossible, it's possible, but all 16 communities would have to approve that. The new agreement allows for a simple majority to approve it. Authorization, authorization for new debt is similar to what it is now. However, the district commits to what's known as Chapter 7116D, where it would seek a unanimous vote from all member towns on a authorization for new debt. If uh, there was one or two communities that did not authorize that debt, the school district would then go to its, uh, a district-wide ballot where voters would be deciding on the debt authorization and it would be a simple majority. However, at that point in time, if one of the communities that didn't vote for the debt, they would have the option to withdraw. Um, so it allows for a lot of flexibility that's currently simply not there. Amendments to a new agreement, although I can't imagine amending this agreement, in my lifetime, um, would still require an unanimous vote by all the uh, member communities. I'm sorry, did you say the voting structure was changed last night? It was tweaked. The weighted voting was um, tweaked to provide a little bit more weight to the smallest communities. Minivan communities, uh, the Minivan district is there's sort of three categories of, of communities. There's tiny towns that send five or less students. Then there's larger towns like Arlington, Lexington, Belmont. Certainly Arlington is the largest. And then there's uh, the median towns. So the, uh, for instance, I've been at Lincoln uh, Select Board meeting and FinCom's meetings the last few weeks, and their vote under the uh, previously revised weighted vote would have had 85 times less the power of the Arlington vote. For them to have a new school or have part of the district in their town, because if a new school is built, it would primarily be in Lincoln, they found that to be a, a difficult um, portion of this revised regional agreement to uh, live with. And given that they're the first community that votes on it, uh, and also in the uh, we had a municipal breakfast on Friday where we discussed this with about 45 <coughs> selectmen and FinCom members. Um, the smaller communities were uh, very pleased with the adjustment. It just seems very late to be making. It's, We've it's, already reviewed it. Yeah, yeah I know. I, that's, I have a <coughs> full responsibility for that because even though the, uh, no one really started to do testing of this until this past couple of weeks after it was finalized. And we went, we did for testing, we went historically and looked at all roll call votes, which we don't have very many in Minuteman. <coughs> Most of our votes are not very close. Um, but we looked at all the roll call votes and with the current, with the previously revised weighted voting, nothing would have changed. But then we started to project different kinds of votes. And there were a couple of instances, depending who shows up at the table, where 11 towns could have voted yes Arlington could have voted no, and it would have been a no vote. It was just, it was a little imbalanced when we look at the practicality of implementing it. And this is a compromise, which I um, agree is unfortunately late in the process. Um, but it, to me, it appeared that it needed to be made in order to get 16 towns to approve the new agreement. Because we still need all 16 towns to approve it. And as someone said a long time ago, there's enough in this agreement that's equally distasteful for different reasons that I think it has a great opportunity to pass. And I think there's a general consensus that it's better than what we have. So are that the winning work again? I'm sorry. 50% everybody has. Right now, every vote is worth 6.25%. Right. In, in the revision, everybody gets half of that. And then the remaining half is assigned by enrollment. So Arlington has about a 19% uh, share. 
and the smallest community has like four percent. Okay, John. Well, I, with all due respect, I, we did vote this in our committee as it stood at the time, and so I find this a little, little bit frustrating until I see what the real document is going to look like. So I, I have to say, Mr. Chairman, I, I would uh, like us maybe to look again at the final. We will have another discussion. Yes. Now, is that the only change? Yes. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Any questions at all on the budget? How the hockey team did? Uh, you know. My basketball team won the vocational championship. That's why my head is shaved. <laughs> <laughs> we have this. I guess it's a for, It's a grit to it. It's a tradition at Minuteman now where. Anytime one of our sports teams wins a championship, the seniors get to shave the superintendent's head. I figured it was a safe bet for 30 years, we won basically nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the third time in three years. Straight, straight, straight radio or <laughs> No, no, no. I mean, we have professionals watching over this. So one student wanted to do some things up there. So thank you. Okay. Uh, Paul? If, if your next superintendent is female, I'll be here. <laughs> You better get some money. If you All right, thanks a lot. Appreciate okay, thank it. you very much for coming. We appreciate your time. Uh, Nineteen percent. We have a little spreadsheet about that. If you want to have it, please I'll give it to Gloria. Sure. Okay. 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 Why don't we start working on our budgets? So everybody can grab their budget book. Okay. Finance committee is done. Are the selectmen is done? No, sorry. It's not? Elections. Elections. Elections still have to be done. Okay. And let's go to the Board of Selectmen Elections. <coughs> okay. Okay, elections. This is page 26. 20, 25. I'm sorry, 25. It's the glasses. Okay, David. Uh, they have presenting a, a budget of um, 131,005 for uh, 2015. At, uh, at the last meeting, I also passed out a breakdown of what they what they say is a breakdown of, of, of the cost of uh, each election. Um, starting with the uh, town election, which includes the annual town meeting costs and also a special town meeting costs. And then if we had additional elections, <coughs> which this year coming, we'll have the state primary as well as the uh, regular uh, elections. So um, I passed that out uh, last week. Um, in addition, <coughs> it was brought to my attention that the, um, the state on, on a reimbursement uh, sent to the, uh, to the town treasurer a total of 17000 736. And that goes back into the general fund. That was for the special state town, uh, special right. state That's elections. Right. For those elections, yeah. right. It was 17,736. Okay, so we've received that. Okay. And that was received on 12-16-13. Uh, Okay, so are you moving the budget as printed? Yes, I am. So how many elections do we have next year? So we've got... We have the town election uh, and um, 
you have the town and primary and, and state primary right. state and primary final. Right. So you got three. Hopefully that's it. Mm -hmm. okay. PD1, yeah, somebody else. This is 121.543 on the thing you handed out. Yes, I, I'm. This is the third time that they gave me this. That's and I think they've got a new one that adds up to the place. Right. right. <laughs> okay, so it's 131005. Yes. Okay. Any questions? Paul? Um, because looking at the election officer's salaries um, and what's on the, the handout from last week, uh, I don't see how it adds up to 69900 with three elections. Um. <coughs> What they did here was, these are only actually two elections. Right, but, but for one election it says 15,960 under the election officers. One fifty five, I guess, the total. Right. And that times three is only forty eight thousand seven hundred dollars. Like I said, this is the third time they gave me this one. So, um, and th this is done in, in their office versus. Uh, we were going to we were going to check with. Peter recommended to check with the control. Okay, how many elections did we have this year? Ten. This past year. Yeah, yeah the, the year we're in. Six. Well, right, but how many regular elections? We didn't have any state elections except for the specials. Right. And so uh, we just had the town election. D didn't we have a, a, a my, my memory is, did we have a, another special election as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had a whole bunch. Well, I'm not counting the state elections. We, Right. The budgeted uh, number of elections right. was one. It was one. But then we had to go back. And we had so many elections on the bus. But my, my, did we not have that the, the special election? In, was it last year? The, uh, for the, well, right. But I'm not counting the special elections. Just the, the regular elections. We just had a town election. Okay. We had a town election. Okay. So that budgeted for 23. This year we'll have three, at least from a budget point of view. That so that's where it's coming from. It seems to make sense. So, so that's how they're doing right. it. They're just multiplying three. three. Yeah, they're just multiplying it times three. This, right. this doesn't mean a whole lot for this. Well, well it's an estimate. <laughs> we asked. We asked for this to, just to give an overview of view of what some things cost that, that people have asked in the past. Um, you know, we. I don't think. That, some people realize that, that we have, they have to rent a, a building as well. They have to pay a certain fee for a custodian, a private custodian for that building. They have to rent, I never realized that they had to rent uh, tables and chairs. I thought the town, we had enough tables and chairs. But, right, but just, just for example, the election officer's line, you know, as Paul pointed out, shouldn't we reduce this to 49,000 because that's what this says? <laughs> I, I don't think so because, again, as I say, this is, I asked for this three times, and it was revised three times. And this is the, this is the one they, they gave me when I went in. Right, uh, so it was such a big difference just in that line item. That's what right. I'm saying. Well, probably doesn't and, and, and Dave, the easier way I think to look at it, it's just my two cents, is 2013 is your benchmark. Because right. every other year, we have a statewide primary and a statewide election. Now, the offices change, right? So the offices this year, I think our, we might have a Senate election, we might not, we might have a gov we have a governor's election, right? In 2012, <coughs> it was a presidential election, but it was the same September and November format. So if you look at 13, in 13 we told 148, 161. So as a sort of sniff test, as long as 15 is not greater than 13, you're starting in the right direction. Right. Yeah. It just seems more like a swag than based on the actual 
supposed analysis. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how well some people do analysis. I want that in minutes. It's on TV. It's funny. Yeah, Alan. The, the uh, handout doesn't have a breakdown according to the uh, um, codes. Right. But their, their personnel costs spread through this under, you know, election costs, services, maintenance, and so forth. It's almost like we should just get a off of Munis by code. It'd be a lot easier to, yeah. to deal with. Okay. Are there any other any other questions? Like Dean says, the 131 is lower than the 148. So. Okay, do I have a motion? <coughs> okay, seconded. Second. Okay, main motion made and seconded for 131,005. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, unanimous. 312.14. Okay, let's, uh, town manager is done. Human resources is done. Information technology. No, I'm done and we're not ready yet. There's there's a discrepancy in some money that I still haven't resolved. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, okay, controller is done. It's done. Treasurer. I have the treasurers, but I'd like to do um, two budgets before it because it sort of rolls into it. Uh, well, we'll do it as well, but um, before we do that, can we do um, postage, which is on page 51? Okay. Um, there's nothing significant here except for the increase in the postage, which is basically um, the dream went up. So I would move that we accept it as is. Okay, so 174,960. Yeah. And you just have the one worker. Okay, so is that your motion, 174,960? Yes. Second? Second. Okay, is there any questions? Okay. Okay, motion's been made and seconded for 174,960 for an increase of 2.61%. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, unanimous. 312.14. Okay, the next budget that rolls through the treasurer's office is on page 71, which is the parking budget. <coughs> and there's basically nothing here except for um, the wage increase, and I would propose that we accept this. I would move that we accept this as filed in the budget book. Second. Okay, so 115,166 for parking. Um, Paul? Just one note on the <coughs> salary detail page. It indicates that the parking clerk is a one person full time equivalent. To, that means he works really hard if he's full time equivalent to two jobs. I believe there's multiple people there. Hang on, that's 71? <laughs> 72. 72 rather, I'm sorry. I'm sure. What was your question? What was your question? Is, Mr. Gilligan is listed as a full time oh. equivalent in right. parking clerk. It's the only position in town with two full time yeah. equivalents. Yeah, but, but the rate's not a full time. Right, right. Yeah, right. Not, but does it get twice as many benefits? I don't know. No. No. It's, it's just, I think it's probably it's more misleading. Unique, it's more it's I think it's you normal. would like to have more hats, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> would, uh, 
My one question, I have no idea if this conversation, if this came up in your conversation, is uh, is there any movement to replace the parking meters? Yes. Yes. Um, they're still studying it. Uh, they're, they would like, I think, to, well, the, the, at some point, and I, I believe it'll have to go through the Capital Budget Committee, but they're, they would like to, the, and they have to wait to see what happens with the parking situation that goes on in town as well. So they're going to piggyback on it, but you know, they, they're screaming about the fact that the meter never works as well. They have issues. Trevor, is that sitting in the budget? It's uh, in the it's, capital plan, yeah, and they and they're they're uh, zeroing in on equipment. I mean, I, I, you know, <clears throat> we've had some discussions about. Uh, I mean, this this has to be coordinated, as as uh, Brian said, with the town manager. We've had some discussions about credit card payments, and I actually went to a trade show, the EMA trade show, and I saw uh, systems that will send you a text message if you're in a restaurant, and the um, your, your meter's about to expire, you know, and then you could pay by your telephone. And, 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 wow. I, I don't know if we'll get to that stage of uh, flexibility, but they are focused on replacing them. Okay, and also, the to add to that, the uh, parking clerk also added that the same text message goes out to uh, meter maid, meter man, that that's about to expire, and he also could rush to that spot <laughs> and write the ticket. That's the best that goes out. The application just copies that. Yeah. <laughs> that should be interesting. Are there any other questions on the parking budget? I think um, each year we get the revenues. Do you have the revenues by chance? It's in the uh, badging uh, report. Yeah. In the book. In, in, in the right. Okay. Is there any other questions on this budget? Okay, uh, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor of 115166, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, now we go back? Yeah, now we'll go back to the Treasury's budget, and the reason is, is that this keeps it all within three and a half. Send this around that way, send those around that way. Now, if I remember correctly, last time we kept them under three and a half by including the uh, postage and the uh, that's, that's where we're at and the parking. So we just and we kept the selectmen under budget under three and a half by including all their other little budgets. So uh, we've got to be consistent from year to year. So the year that the postage skyrockets, you know, that's got to be absorbed also. Okay. Okay. Um, it's hang on. What page in the budget book? And you don't even need to look in the budget book because this these numbers have been revised. Also, if you look to the highlighted numbers, the lines, those are the. They don't show up. There. I'm sorry. That's on my copy. I apologize because I didn't take that one. Um, I'll tell you which lines it is. It's the uh, salary and wages, of account number fifty one hundred. Um, it's been reduced. The the correct no, the number in front of you five eighty one three forty nine is correct. Um, there was an error on the step on one of the steps. Um, the overtime they are pushing for they push for substantially more overtime. They had a vacant position um, in the past. I believe their overtime right now is at fifteen thousand dollars. Um, but they said they and th that they might have more this year, um, but that remains to be seen. Um, so they said that they could live within this. Um, and also the longevity um, is down because of the, there's a new person coming in, which is why the step is lower. So there's no longevity, so that, that was reduced. Um, you might add, uh, on the overtime, we had some fairly extensive discussions uh, about their overtime requirements this year and next year. And um, one source of the overtime is uh, is the uh, quarterly billing that um, the town has introduced on the, on the water and sewer. 
The other is uh, they just had a retirement, and the person's name is uh, McLean, assistant collector, and and uh, they have a new replacement in there, so they've got to train that person. And then um, we assume that they're going to hire sometime soon the deputy treasurer. Uh, they have selected the candidate. Um, town manager and the human resources director and whoever there are a number of people on the search committee have approved uh, you know, this designated person and I think they may have actually negotiated a uh, offer but it has to be approved by the board of selectmen and I don't know whether that's happened <coughs> or when it will happen if it happens um, and, you, excuse me, and, and the point was that new even the you know the the deputy treasurer is going to have to be trained just to learn the systems and the way things are done in Arlington. So uh, they're going to have two new people on next year, plus the quarterly tax bill uh, to deal with. Do you have a, another copy of the uh, of the breakdown? Is this just as the front page of the salary breakdown? Yeah. Oh no, I don't. I don't. Look, at, oh. you can look at the old one. Yeah. If you look at the old one, look at the page of the old. Page 48. Page 48. Page 48. Page 48. Oh, you're right. It won't help. Right. The new numbers are not. Yeah. I can tell you that the uh, the, early, so the so the pay the overtime went from 15,000 uh, was cut from the request they had and they were 22,000 something or another on, on the report. So that was reduced by about uh, 7,000. And the uh, the the replacement person uh, for um, the claim is is in here in the original book at uh, 40, forty-nine thousand three thirteen, yeah. or sorry, forty-nine thousand nine thirteen, including longevity. There's no longevity in the new person, and I think it was six thousand two hundred and some dollars. They had forty-one thousand oh twenty-nine. Yeah, it's the new salary. Okay. And they weren't sure of the new deputy treasurer salary, but it would be somewhere between the min and the max. Yeah, and so we, we just left it as is at, yeah. this, at this point until we have any other information. And then the, the expenses were reduced. Uh, how much did they reduce it? I'm sorry, how much did they reduce it? Which, like 4,000. Yep, I think so. I think that's probably right. 20, uh, 28 to 24. 20. Yeah, the yeah, office supplies were back to 25. Right. Yep. And then the uh, and then the other expense line, general expense line, was reduced by a thousand. Right. But there's and but part of what I have to talk to IT about is there's a twenty-five thousand dollar amount that needs to be accounted for in either Treasury or IT. That's a good point. So there's another. So I don't know that we can actually uh, vote on this tonight. We can vote on or amend it, or we can amend it later. Yeah. Right. Well, it's not in here, so I think we, we should vote on this budget. Yeah. Right. And, uh, the the issue is that um, the IT department has been printing bills and stuffing envelopes um, you know, with the machine, and then it goes out and gets mailed, and they want to outsource it. And so um, they will save some money by outsourcing it, but the outsourcing bill is still going to be twenty five thousand yeah. dollars. And it's the it, it turns out that it's not in the IT budget. Right. right. It's not. And it's not in this budget. And it's not here. So where where was it before? IT budget. IT. Mm -hmm. So that's what. Uh, so I think I would recommend that we vote this budget as <coughs> okay. Put the twenty five back in the IT budget. Oh, okay. Okay, as long as it gets put someplace. <laughs> okay, so your recommendation is for 675-035. Correct. Which represents 4% as modified by the other two budgets. Is that a motion? Moved, no. yes. Oh, I'm just looking at the sheet, it says 4%. Oh, 3.5%, right? Yeah, total. Yeah, grand total. Yeah. Okay, uh, so that's a motion? Yes. Second? Second. Okay, questions? Uh, Dean? 
If I look at 2014 budget line 5290 tax taking expense, is this the one we did? We have a reserve fund transfer for this line during the year. Yes. So this, just so I got my own notes correct, this number is higher by whatever that was, and that's this sort year. Of, right. And that's sort of the ebb and flow we talked about. That's where right. some years it's you, low and some years it's high, right. and exactly. got it. Thank you. Okay, any others, Alan? I think you said the quarter time, the, the overtime was related to the new quarterly billing. Water, water and sewer the, is now being billed quarterly. Right, will that eventually be taken out of overtime and then put into the regular? Uh, well, I guess they don't tend to do that, it, it varies. I mean, it, and they have assistant clerks doing it. It's the account, it's a, it's a, I mean, if, if it gets put in the regular budget, that means you're hiring a person and you have to look at Benefits and other costs. Okay, so going to quarterly doesn't require a new whole FTA, just some extra hours. Right. Yes. That's right. Well, is that covered by the, should uh, that be covered by the offsets from water and sewer? It's a lot higher. I don't, I don't. Uh, it should be something that there we, are offsets from water and sewer. I mean, basically, the, the argument that the uh, Treasury Department made, which I have to say I was personally involved in, so I have some empathy for is that they have traditionally had uh, between twelve and fifteen thousand dollars worth of overtime a year, and uh, a couple of years ago when the budget was tight, um, the finance committee assisted them in reducing that budget and, and taking whatever they could transfer out of expenses, whatever. But they're still, um, uh, you know, they have increased. Uh, I mean, this, this overtime is really counter service. And and, uh, and and reconciling, you know, the more activity they have, uh, the more errors there are, and the more reconciliations they have to do. And they expect more this year because of the new billing. So that may that in, in the future that may go down a little bit, but yeah. all I'm saying is that any extra expenses that the treasurer has office has because of the quarterly water billing should eventually <coughs> be offset with eventually, but not this year. Yeah, maybe not this year, but. Uh, that should be taken into an account in a higher offset from water and sewer. So, okay, is there any other questions or comments? We'll Carolyn? They, it's just that they've been covering their their overtime through the vacant positions. So that's why we're su cu yeah. suddenly seeing it again. Okay, anybody else? Grant? I'm sorry, what's the uh, increase in the banking services charge? It's a contract. Okay. The actual contract, about that. Yeah, correct. Not the it was, and it's correct. Okay. They did remark that it, I think they said next year, it was a, this is the third year in a three year contract, and it's, it was back loaded. Oh, that's right. And uh, that, I don't know if it's next year or the year after, but there's a, you know, a re renegotiation coming up. You know, they may get a better deal and it'll go down or it may go up. It's a, I would think for their budgeting purposes, it would be better if they could have it fairly level. Which Except that, you know, when the last contract came out, it was in the bad times, so yeah. the focus was meet, meet the, meet the uh, constraints. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay, uh, the budget recommendation is for 675035 All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Favorable action. Okay. Post is obviously done. Assessors? Um, okay. Legal. Oh, it's done first. Done. Done. Okay. Done. That's done. Parking is done. Planning is done. Development is done. Zoning. See, this gives us some exercise as Do we're it. going through. <laughs> Public works.
start with natural resources on page 91. Natural Resources Division, they're responsible for all the open spaces, the gardens, the bike path, the trees, the, uh, all of the grounds in the town. Uh, the <coughs> budget as a whole for Natural Resources is up 2.13%. Uh, there aren't any surprises in um, salaries. Uh, there is um, an increase in one uh, expense line item. Um, just in, in terms of background, um, I'll explain what the, the, these expense lines um, mean. Maintenance uh, 5202 is actually contract services. That's uh, mowing, um, groundskeeping, turf enhancement, things like that. Training is self-explanatory. <coughs> Other supplies is actually materials. Uh, and traditionally, uh, in this uh, part of the budget, as well as the rest of the DPW budget, materials are always always seem to be under budgeted. Um, so it, it's uh, I think it uh, it's a good thing that uh, the expense for materials uh, has been increased, uh, albeit slightly. Um, the line item 5236, other purchase services, that is the line item for holiday lights. Um, I, we had a, um, um, a discussion with uh, Mike Rademacher about uh, the Uncle Sam holiday lights. Uh, this is the budget that would cover it, and there's, as you can see, there's enough money. Um, to cover any additional lights for the, the uh, Uncle Sam Plaza. Uh, incidentally, the, um, the Uncle Sam committee did not approach uh, Public Works uh, uh, saying that they needed it or wanted it. Um, but in any event, the money's there, he's willing to do it. Uh, we did have uh, a discussion about um, the Uncle Sam site. Um, we talked about the tourism shed and the historical signs. Um, and there is no provision in the DPW budget for maintenance of either. Uh, so we should keep that in mind. Um, uh, Public Works understands that the historical signs should be good for about five years. So there may be five years worth of uh, use of the signs before any maintenance would be needed, um, and uh, and they are willing to. Uh, I, as I understand, they intend to install the signs at the Uncle Sam Plaza, but um, the tourism board is going to handle an installation of all the other signs. I don't know if they know that, but as far as the BW is concerned, that's 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 what they think. Um, uh, uniforms, badges, and gloves, self-explanatory. Um, you can see that we have a budget of $40,000 like we did last year for a tree replacement. That reflects the renewed commitment of the town to, to replace some of our uh, tree canopy. You'll see um, the last two items. Uh, can you give you a report like how many trees have been uh, drawn in? Like there are a lot more trees going in this spring? There's, there's more. They haven't. They're not up and running yet. They yeah. they they intend to um, install um, the trees coming in the spring primarily, and they're going to be placed um, based on um, two criteria: one, um, resident requests, and perceived need. And if they're what they would like to do is um, part of those parts of the town that. That they feel need trees. They're going to try to uh, match them with residents who have um, evidence desire to have trees, so that there is somebody who will take ownership and take care of these trees, so they won't just be planted and die. Because mm -hmm. um, you'll, they'll probably have a couple questions on that issue at town meeting. Um, and the last two expense items um, uh, for the 2013 budget. 
Uh, otherwise unclassified and 529901 expense. These are ex un unexpected expenses that we had to pay in uh, relationship to the microburst <coughs> of Hurricane Sandy. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, again, the only major ch change, and it's a minor one, is an increase of $1,250 in materials. And I recommend that we approve the natural resources budget for one million two hundred sixty-two thousand three hundred thirty-one dollars a second? second second any questions or discussion about the budget no but i have a topic i want to bring up in relation to water bodies and natural resources do you want to finish this first and then we can do that well is it do you deal with it's this not budget? related it's not related to the budget but it's related to this department okay uh, this probably is related to any what, what's your what's your question so or issue? we we have these committees that we give money to that um when i listened the last three years each time the assistant director assistant director of um dpw shows up she clearly knows what she's talking about she's clearly interested in natural resources and water bodies and whatnot uh, she's clearly interested in what the latest ex, you know, ex expertise is around these areas. So, and this was not the case when I was a teenager and a 20-something in town. It was not the case in terms of the town manager <coughs> as well, which is why we have these different committees to get these amounts of money. And I'm wondering if it's becoming time to move that money and those decision-making um, issues back into the DPW budget. I'm not suggesting we do this here, nor do I think we can, but I think as a committee we should at some point discuss that because it involves money. Go ahead. So that was one of the first, I remember when I first joined the Finance Committee, that was one of my very first questions and thoughts, and I mm -hmm. convinced myself that that was the right answer. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then when I was talking at one of our meetings to the Bipon people, I call them. I know that's a more formal name, so I apologize. Um, they kindly pointed out to me that general fund money can't roll over from year to year, mm -hmm. and that the whole management mechanism um, that we use with the water bodies can't occur if it's in the DPW budget because you can't roll the money from year to year. And they were trying to sort of separate it. Now, I'm not saying that that's the best answer, mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that's the right answer. I'm just bringing up that when I brought it up, that was the answer. Okay. Peter? The, uh, the Water Bodies Fund is maybe what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the, uh, the Vision 20 subcommittee works on it, mm -hmm. works with. But that fund is, is a town fund. Mm -hmm. it's re the manager is responsible for it mm -hmm. through the Public Works Department, and that's why the uh, assistant public works director knows all about it. The uh, the function of the of the uh, volunteer committee mm -hmm. is to encourage her to, to do it mm -hmm. and to assist it. <coughs> so and and you're you're absolutely right. Um, it was not very many years ago when the town the capital of town pretended there wasn't any water body. That's changed. Right. Charlie? Yeah, Peter, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think one of the other things that, the, that um, the way it's handled now accomplishes is that it allows the town to collect volunteer contributions as well as... That's true. Uh, so that the town can spend, you know, I don't exactly know the mechanism, but both source, both, both appropriated money and volunteer, uh, you know, donations mm -hmm. go into the fund and are used for the purpose. I, I, I've heard the arguments uh, mm -hmm. as to, to why we need a separate fund. But I look here at our tree replacement fund mm -hmm. that we've created. Mm -hmm. And we created that, um, the 40000 this year and, and for 2015 and 2014, because we wanted to have a, we wanted to protect that money so that um, we don't we don't give up uh, trees at any particular time in order to pay for something. <coughs> and second, we want to, 
and, and I also look at this and I see this this is a open up that door. I, I think a lot of this and certainly in maintenance there are contract services that we 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 enter into a contract that that may span two different fiscal years but the payment we work out the payment right. so I I, I I see this as as I see this and I, I continue to question why we should continue to have to uh, have uh, an operating budget and then the separate water bodies fund and then I, I, I think it, it, it we should continue to, to debate that issue and maybe do it again next year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there any discussion on the natural resources budget as presented? Any questions? Okay, all the motion seconded for 1,262,331. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Election. Yes. The next budget is the maintenance of the town fields. <coughs> we have. We budget $40,000 each year. It's an arrangement that we have with Parks and Rec. We, the DPW uh, picks up the first $40,000 and Parks and Rec uh, pays the rest for um, taking care of the town planning fields. So I uh, recommend that we approve the, this uh, budget item for $40,000. Second. Now, um so Parks and Rec, uh, the uh, Enterprise Fund picks up? Yeah. Now how about, uh, the, how does it work with the private parties? The, uh, the leagues and all, do they contribute some too, don't they? I think they pay fees and it's, it's a, okay. that goes into it. That's where the Parks, Parks and Rec gets right. the money. Yeah, right. Okay. Okay, so motion's been made and seconded for 40000 for maintenance of town's fields. Uh, any other questions or? What? All those in favor of $40,000, please say aye. 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 Opposed? One number. Okay, unanimous. 93. Thanks. The next budget is town engineer. Town engineer. Um, this is the division that provides all engineering services to the rest of the DPW and the rest of the town. It provides technical assistance, um, overseas construction, um, things like that. Um, in all, the budget is going up 0.90%. Uh, um, there um, isn't any um, change really from last year's budget except that uniforms and badges are going down and uh, salaries are going up 1.33%. Um, in, in the expense um, line items, 5202 uh, maintenance is, is again professional services and that encompasses um, any surveying or mapping or things like that that the town needs to uh, contract for. I assume by badges you mean it's ID cards phrase from the police. Yeah. yeah. It, it's an old phrase. You know, but, but you're right. Now, now we need an ID test. Okay, so is your motion for 138685? It is. Second? Second. Okay, are there any questions? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? 31214. The next budget is Public Works um, Administration, and that provides the oversight for all the other divisions in DPW. There is a change from the budget book, and that is in the longevity line item 5156. Um, longevity should be $4,729, and that will give a um, bottom line salary number of two thousand two hundred forty one thousand four hundred twenty one dollars. Oh, I'm sorry, two four one two four one four two one and a bottom line figure of two six four eight two one. Two six four what is that? 
264821. 8281. Thank you. Where's the change in the longevity? It is in the uh, director's longevity. Okay. His, his longevity, uh, the director of public works, it should be $1,229. Okay, so your motion is 264821. Yes, it is. Second? Second. Any questions? Okay, so we get a. The the uh, the the, the, the um, there's an increase in salaries, uh, and the, there are two drivers in that. One is that we filled the position of energy manager this year, and uh, and the budget uh, request for 2015 will be is higher than what was budgeted for that vacant position in 2014. The energy manager is a shared position with Bedford. We have her for two-thirds of the time and Bedford has her for one-third of the time. Bedford also pays one-third of her salary and benefits. And you can see that in the offset on the salary detail page. Uh, the second um, change in um, salaries is that our recycling coordinator is going from half time to almost full time. Um, and there is also um, an, um, a use of the recycling revolving fund to offset part of that increase. And again, that's reflected on the salary detail. Um, the reason for uh, the increase in hours for the recycling coordinator um, is primarily to, uh, well, one of, one of the major uh, hopes of the DPW is that she will be auditing our um, recycling compliance. Um, as you know, you're only supposed to put out a certain amount of trash and you have to have recycling out with it and that's not being done. And the, the uh, trash collector shouldn't be picking up um, trash if there's no recycling with it and uh, one of her uh, jobs will be to go out and audit the our, our collector to make sure that they are um, doing what they're supposed to do so that our uh, recycling goals can be met um, so with th those are the, again those are the two um, major changes um, or increases in the, the salary expense line Okay, so any questions or discussion, Charlie? Recycling coordinator. Uh, was that position supposed to be paid for by white goods fees or something like that? I don't know if it was supposed to be paid for, but we in prior years, the, the, we had the recycling fund that was um, used to, to fray part of it, at least. Um, now, the recycling revolving fund um, doesn't include white goods because our trash contract includes that, but there is, we now have scrap metal that the town collects and, and sells and gets some money to put into the revolving fund. My, my, my question is really that this position was created under the, um, you say it, Stated policy of the town that it wasn't going to have any incremental costs in the department, mm -hmm. and that the certain, I think it was the white goods collection process where certain fees were going to be paid was going to cover the cost. And I'm just curious as to whether we've lost track of that goal or whatever. Well, I certainly we've moved from it because we don't get fees anymore because it's, because now they are handles that. So why do we need to do this? We need, well, the DPW says we need the position to make sure that uh, people do recycle and that our collector doesn't pick up trash when there is a recycling also at the, at the curb. Shouldn't he? I mean, that's their problem to monitor, right? Who? The DPW. Though that's the problem. They're not so we need, we need someone to monitor them to get them to comply with their obligations to under their contract. It's a lot cheaper to recycle than it is to take it to the home. I, I, I'm just frustrated that this is something gone awry. 
Mm -hmm. I guess related to that, I, I guess I would like the Finance Committee to request our analyst, Mike Luden, to, to look at those, to, to just bring some, put some numbers behind the cost effectiveness of that position and possibly a position to see what, what the return is. And I, I, I think he's in a good position to do that independent of DPW. Mm -hmm. I should also point out that the hope is that uh, we have a new um, dis disposal contract. Um, that will kick in 2016, and the hope and the expectation is that the savings from that can be used to offset this position. What, what, what a motion to request this position. <clears throat> that Mike Bowden. Okay, are you making a motion? I, I, I would like to, to, if it's proper, I would like to move that the Finance Committee request an analysis from the Town Manager's Office on the cost effectiveness uh, of the, the recycling report. Okay, is there a second to that? Second. second. Okay. The, the Paul, purpose being to answer Charlie's question. Yeah. Paul? Um, if this audit determines that uh, JRM is not um, appropriately refusing to pick up items, um, is there any penalty to JRM in the contract for not doing what they're contracted to do? I, I don't know. I don't know. But I know that. Um, there, I know that DPW is incentivized to have this audit, so I would expect that there is some recourse in the contract. Otherwise, why bother? Something to add to that. Okay, Grant. Uh, I believe, Mike, uh, last year, one of the things that you mentioned about this was it's kind of a opposite effect because if somebody's throw, regardless of whether JRM is supposed to pick them up or not, if you throw out paper instead of recycling paper, it costs more for the dumping and we receive less for recycling it. So I think Mike might have been going on that angle. Is that it's being improperly disposed of, I think. Does that make any sense? That if you throw out 10 pounds of paper in the trash, it costs more to haul the trash away. Then if you put it properly in recycling, we're getting more direct. Believe that's what you meant. Okay, Alan and then Charles. So I guess I, 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 that's certainly true. Um, anecdotally, by direct observation, you can see that there is there are violations both by residents and by JRM. I just don't really understand how a person can go around town I, watching the trash collection. That's part of my question. To see yeah. whether it's being done. So I, again, I'd like to get some numbers behind it. The, behind the, these assumptions. The, the first question I have is the position was supposed to be paid for by a certain process. If that process is gone, mm -hmm. then we don't need the position. I mean, somebody asked this question the other day, uh, actually at the capital plan presentation about something, you know, we, we introduced an efficiency into the system and, and suppose it was the water meter readers. Supposedly the water, water meter readers go, go away. That was, they did say that. One time, you know, or they no longer need that, but somehow they migrate into some other role. So my concern here, only because this is one that happened to pop up in my mind from the prior situation, is that a the position was supposed to be paid for by some sort of fees that this job mm -hmm. was going to generate, and if that the, we don't have any, and if the new contract is is cheaper and better without that fee collection, why do we have the position? <coughs> And then secondly, if it's repurposed, what is the repurpose? How is it working? Okay, I, I'm, I sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure we don't know the whole story, yeah, but I, I think we, we have an analyst in, okay. that's outside of DPW. I think you get the answer, so put it the other. John? Christine, do you know what the rule is right now? Are you supposed to have one recycled barrel for every barrel of rubbish? Is no, you just need, you need to have your recycling bin out with something in it. Mm -hmm. And they'll pick up your, your trash. If you if you don't have some recycling at the no curb, and no trash to be picked up. They'll, they'll put a sticker up. on your trash I've seen it. Right. They put a sticker on your trash can and your trash isn't picked up. But there's a limit on trash too. There's a th three barrels per ha per household. And of course then the problem is when your recycling gets picked up first, and you bring in the barrels, there's nothing <laughs> out there. But yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have, we have a we'll have a uh, We'll vote on that. David? I, I just put, if you bear with me, my police mind is working here. 
I don't know how they can enforce that. Let's use a hypothetical. Today is rubbish day. I put my recycle out, I put my regular rubbish out. The recycle truck comes first, takes my recycle, I go out, it's windy, I take my barrel in, I put it away. Now comes the rubbish truck, oh, he didn't have his recycle out, therefore we don't pick up his rubbish. Or, or, or vice versa. I don't think the law says that you have to keep, keep an em empty container out, out there that would a, re a recycle bin. Uh, see, it's well intended, but I think it's tremendously hard to enforce. Uh, in regards to who's monitoring it, 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 it it's, a, it's an exercise. Okay, Paul. Um, when this program was introduced, and I know they sent out notices on the Arlington Notice mm -hmm. setup, and I think it was in the paper also. They they asked people to leave their recycling bins yeah. out yeah. until the rubbish was picked up. I understand that, Paul. I, I, I agree with 100%. My point is, on a windy day, yeah. your barrel or, or your container is four houses down or four houses up. The I'll easiest thing to do is I'll run over, <laughs> bring it back in. Yes, because see, I threw through it. I mean, <laughs> we, don't, we don't live in a perfect place. Okay, well, wait. Well, um, all good points. Um, we can make a request to the town manager to provide a cost and analysis. Uh, of oh, the recycling coordinator. Yeah, based on the effectiveness of enforcement and, and anything else. That, yeah. you know, I mean, are we saving money or whatever? Okay. Okay. That just puts some numbers behind it. That's some good okay, and I believe we had a, a motion in a second. Uh, let's vote on that first. Uh, all those in favor of asking for the cost benefit analysis at this position, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So I'll make that request verbally to the manager tomorrow. Okay, meanwhile, getting back to the public works budget. Uh, do you want to hold on this, or do you want to just get it voted, and then we could always come back to it? Voted. Okay. Uh, I, I had a question if we're moving on from the recycling. I had another question. Sure. Um, going back a couple of years, I think it was, um, and Minuteman and the pensions. Does the contribution from Bedford for the energy manager take into account for the pensions? Yes, it does. Good. Thank you. Okay, Charles. Yeah, I, I, I think we should have, uh, put this budget on hold until we get the analysis from the uh, from the manager's department because otherwise they don't have an incentive to do the analysis and get back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, a motion to table would be in order. If that's what you want to do. I move the table. Second. Okay. Motion to table is uh, without debate usually. All those in favor of tabling this budget, we say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Okay. All those in favor of tabling the budget, please raise your hand. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Opposed? Two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, the budget is tabled. Okay, next. Okay, next is uh, highway. Uh, this is the budget that pays for the, the streets, the sidewalks, uh, maintenance of drains, highway. culverts, <coughs> sweeping, things like that. Um, their uh, the salaries uh, are going up 2.03%. Uh, there's uh, uh, nothing of uh, note in highway salaries, expenses. Um, they're, um, this, they're the same as the year before the 2014 budget. Um, elect, uh, auto, uh, fuel is going down 10,000 and Pavement markings, that's the 5270 uh, expense line marking <coughs> highways. Um, that is going up $10,000. Um, <coughs> the, um, the reasoning for inc an $10,000 increase in pavement markings or, or highway markings 
is that um, there, there, were, there were essentially two different types of um, line markings that, be, that can be used. One is longer lasting but more expensive. And that is the one that they intend to use in 2015 for Mass Ave. So they um, are expecting, DPW is expecting um, that item, line item will be um, cost a little bit more in 2015. Um, and everything else uh, stays the same. And I recommend that we approve the highway budget of one million six hundred thirty-five thousand four hundred thirteen dollars. Second. Okay. Alan. Uh, regarding the Mass Ave pavement markings, is that is that not the East no, Arlington Mass Ave pavement markings? I wouldn't think would be done in in this fiscal year, and also I would think it would be covered in the whole rebuild budget. Right. I, I I took it to mean other. Portions of Mass Ave are ready. Yeah, the, for the other, other portions. Yeah. Okay. So at some point, I mean, the, the thermoplastic is like three times more expensive and, and supposed to last five times as long. The idea, again, being a reduction in the budget over time, not an increase. Presumably. So I, I, I think we should try to anticipate a reduction or leveling off of the budget, not an increase for that reason. There might be an initial investment that's almost right. like a capital investment, but shouldn't be. We also have to take in consideration that this line item, um, as well as the, the, the top <coughs> item called maintenance, it seems like every, there's a, an expense item called maintenance in all these budgets, and they're not maintenance. Um, the, the 5202 includes um, dumpsters for construction debris, police details, equipment rentals, um, things like that. Um, that line item and pavement markings, is, they're also uh, affected uh, by the weather. So um, that those can go up and down um, depending on, on what's happening as well. So it's not simply uh, we can just look at a piece of paper and say, Right, but this we is can't predict down. the weather. What's that? We can't budget for changes of the right. weather. Right, right. Well, um, on the overtime budget, is this one that's annually under budgeted um, and they make up for it next year? Because uh, looking at, at <coughs> actuals from 12 and 13. Um, the actuals for 13. Um, um, oh, did that include the storm? That, yeah. <coughs> the, the, you could see there's a, there was a there was a reduction from 12 to 13 in the seasonal workers and an increase in the overtime, and that was uh, to deal with the storm storms. Chuck, Christine, uh, you know the, the capital planning committee follows the they have, follows the Department of Public Works. The highway department has a um, pavement road plan, you know, that they, uh -huh. they go through every year, and we actually heard them and sort of finalized that back in December. And I've been noticing since then you know, the weather's been pretty bad. The roads are in terrible shape. I was wondering if you had any conversation with I mean they had a plan that they've got money for that was made before this winter. And if you look, almost every street has got potholes that can hide a, hide an automobile. <laughs> and I'm wondering where they're gonna get the money to do this and if you had any conversation with my grandmaker I haven't. So, haven't. so I, I'm just wondering how they're going to, you know, get these potholes and, and roads back to some sort of uh, condition. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good yeah. question. So, well, it could be a uh, ask the manager. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it's, it's an issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. Al, if I could, if we're doing that, I'd like to ask, I, I have heard that there's a state grant to apply to repave the length of Gray Street, which could save a lot of money because it's a mess that we spent a lot of money on. So I guess I would ask, is that, is what I heard true? That there's a okay. State I, will, grant uh, <coughs> I will pass that on to the manager and ask that we're interested in just getting some feedback on how all these streets going to be repaired. There was another one on the list today that reference between uh, Mystic Street, so between uh, Mass Ave and uh, oh, right. uh, oh. it's pretty bad. 
Um, if if the winter never ends, then we'll have another chance to fix it. <laughs> okay. Are there any other questions on this uh, on this budget? That's I would go. Okay. All those in favor of one million six thirty five four thirteen, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Favorable action. Unanimous. Three twelve. The next is the snow budget. Um, the 2015 uh, budget request is the same amount that we budgeted for 2014. Um, I um, this uh, 7, 7, the $724,000 amount is about 71% of our actual 10-year average cost, not including the current year we're in, uh, just so that you have some, some idea of um, what that will typically buy us. Um, our actual <coughs> snow budget for the last 10 years, six of those 10 years have surpassed $724,000. I think we we bandied about a target of some kind. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we used 75% at one point. We used 80% at one point mm -hmm. that we want to try to get to. Uh, now the manager is probably pretty close to his three and a half percent increase. So it's uh, uh, mm. I'd like to see this increased if at all possible, even if it's you know whatever we can, but. Uh, I think we'll have to wait and end, we'll, yeah. see what the final. We to do that at the last one. Yeah. Three and a half percent. Sure. My suggestion would be at a uh, minimum mm -hmm. that we do increase this by now. I also think we should be planning on increasing the reserve fund down. And um, it was still a system last year. I don't see any reason why the person in charge of the budget doesn't recommend that increase it now. <coughs> What, what would it be if we went to 75? So that's an extra 4%. It would be seven, $766,887 if we went to 75%. Okay, I'm sorry, 700? 766,887. How about 800,000? Good round number. Well, I mean, if, if we use a, if we have a target of 75%, then uh, at least. We're basing on some kind of a, a logical number. Well, uh, obviously, then he'd have to for that he'd have to figure out where to get another twenty-five, thirty-five, thirty-six thousand, <clears> or if we go to eighty, eight hundred thousand, another seventy-one thousand, seventy-six thousand. <laughs> <See? coughs> if we have just so I can trees. remember the mechanics. So when we we were allowed under state law to overspend the snow and ice budget if we meet certain criteria. Right. And then that goes into the following year mm -hmm. and we raise that, we raise the money to pay for that through taxes above the norm. It doesn't go into the next year's budget, it goes above. It goes on the next year's tax rate. It goes on top of it on the tax rate. Right. But it doesn't go over a proper Right. It's not excluded. Well, it doesn't go on proposition two. It's, it it's excluded from two and a half. No, it's in. No, it's, no, it's, in. No, it's, it's within two and a half. Yeah. yeah. So in other words, that's why the budget, the manager, his five-year plan, always has five hundred thousand dollars sitting there <coughs> under sort of other. Uh, so we have this budget plus the five hundred thousand. Now this year we're another two hundred thousand above that. Um, you know, so that is, but. I, I, the reason I like to see, and we've been increasing this budget sort of every year, is because um, it's a rolling deficit, and we shouldn't have to the degree to the degree we can. We shouldn't have it. Right. So I get the, here would be my comment, though, right? Because we're talking about the three and a half percent, but if the mechanics, if we just review the mechanics, we just said makes no sense to, to not increase it because if you, if you think about it so um, and I'm just gonna I'd have to look at it right so the current year go if we go to, if we go to the current year that we're in right 
we don't really have a seven hundred twenty-four thousand dollars snow and ice budget. We more likely have a well. Yeah, look at the prior right. year. I mean, we have a one point four million dollars snow and ice budget because right. we have one. We have seven hundred twenty-four thousand plus right. the seven hundred that we're rolling from thirteen. And so next year we're going to end up doing the exact same mechanic. So it seems like we're one of these situations where we're um, we're, we're sort of feeling like we're staying within the parameters of the three and a half percent because we <clears throat> keep it at 724 or something like that, but we're not keeping in the parameters of the three and a half percent. We're spending what we need to spend. Mm -hmm. So the budget right. always has another number to it. So even if we, I mean, I, I'd have to schedule it out to, for it to make more sense, but even if we increase this budget $500,000, right? Assuming that your run rate would be with 1.2 million and you got it to you like you said, they have $1.2 million run rate. After next year, it, all evens out and normalizes on the five-year model. It would just be a one, you know, so whether you do it, whether you move it up to 1.2, you keep it 724, it really doesn't matter in the end. You still end up with the exact same number. So really what you're doing is getting to like, for lack of better term, truth in budgeting. Except that we okay, get- Okay, Alan. I have a legal question. If you have a winter with very little snow and you have a lot in the, in the snow and ice budget, can that money be spent on say, buying more trees? No. So, uh, so by having a high snow and ice budget, you've sort of encumbered, and all you can do is buy mountains of salt or not spend it. Until the next year. When you have Until the next year, whereas if it's low and you overspend it, then you have some flexibility. I can either buy more salt in a bad winter or I can plant more trees, but it gives you some flexibility that you don't have if you just keep it high. Uh, is that reasoning correct? I mean, I, we usually give the, the DPW director the flexibility to transfer money um, within his budget. Um, could he move from snow and ice to trees? Yes. I, I, I suppose he could. Okay. Then, then, then if, if they have that flexibility, then, then I agree with you. Okay. Um, Carolyn and then Mary and then Dick. Isn't there a penalty if we if we over budget one year with snow and ice? You, you cannot. We can't. You only have the ability to overspend as long as you appropriate at least what you appropriated last year. So we can never bring it back down? Oh, we can never lower it, okay. That's why a lot of towns, they never change their budget. You know, you see Somerville who spends, you know, a million and a half dollars, but every year they appropriate 300,000 or something like that. Um, it was sort of a, um, and, but you've built in a structural deficit. That's why our budget used to be a few years ago, $359,000. Very yes, and we've been bumping it up every year, you know, with money we have. Um, but when that budget goes to town meeting, the manager can only go up three and a half percent. That's why, you know, if he's got an extra ten, we throw it in. Um, you know, unless you want to go back to the manager and say we're increasing the budget, you know, by fifty thousand dollars, tell us where you're going to cut it. You know, uh, when? But we're increasing other budgets by more than three and a half percent. I'm sorry. We're increasing other budgets. That rule is for the three-year plan, which we're now past. I, I, you know, I think pretty much it's sort of rolled over. The only, uh, yes. you know, there's a couple of line, you know, items that we allow. Um, elections reserve fund has never been included in that. Uh, but like the schools, they've had two modifications. One was for special ed we made, and this year, we're, you know, uh, we haven't heard the school budget, but. To allow for enrollment increases, but generally, I think it, it, it's expected, and I think the selectmen and the manager expect that he has to hold his budget to three and a half percent. Mary, I'll make a motion we adjourn. <laughs> oh, good for you. Uh, it's it's uh, it's ten o'clock. We could continue this discussion uh, at the next meeting. Uh, Will we have time at the next meeting to do the Okay. Meeting? Well, the next meeting is going to be the uh, school committee meeting. Um, <coughs> let me talk to the manager a bit on uh, what flexibility he might have in, in other places. Think about how you want to handle it. I think the idea of doing something like 75% of the last 10 years average, yeah. and you know, and that is going to keep going. That's going to keep going up. Um, uh, and doing it that way would be a reasonable thing to do. Uh, so why don't we vote this the next time we have the opportunity. Uh, next Monday is the school budget. 
Um, that usually takes a good part of it. You've got the budgets um, on it, so be prepared with your, uh, with your questions. And uh, so, we need to adjourn. Uh, second, uh, just a note on the high school. There is a walkthrough tour this Saturday, March 15th at 9, from 9 to 10.30. Yep. There's another walkthrough if you want to go Tuesday night on the 18th at 4 o'clock. And on Thursday the 20th, you can go at 4 o'clock. So there are three walkthroughs coming up. I would encourage uh, every member of the Finance Committee to take a walkthrough. Um, to really get a sense, because this is going to be a big one. Okay, thank you.